Well, Professor Clements with you as we uh, again talk about um, atoms and electron configurations. So we want to write out some atomic electron configurations using the notation that's traditional uh, for how electrons are arranged in various atoms. And I'm going to put up a little uh, chart that will help us uh, do this. This chart is not perfect. In, should not be used too far into the periodic table, but for the uh, lighter elements in the periodic table, this chart will, will help you. So the 1s state, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. We're not going to use in this example. Um, this chart tells us how to fill up the electron states. And I now draw some diagonals here. So first I'll fill up 1s, then I'll fill up 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, then 4s, then 3d, 4p, and let's go ahead and put 5s up here, but we're not going to use that. And it's up in here where you start getting into trouble. Uh, this rule is not uh, uh, applicable as we get into the periodic table, there are quantum mechanic effects that uh, change the energies to uh, uh, change the way that we fill up the states. The electrons uh, will fill up the lowest energy states first, near the nucleus. That's the 1s. The 1 here is the n number. n of 1, n of 2, n of 3, n of 4. The s relates to the l number. So l equals 0, l equals 1, l equals 2, l equals 3. <coughs> and um, you know, so forth and uh, so on, but uh, following the list, the, the rules, and we'll consider now fluorine. First, we have to look up in a periodic table, and we find that fluorine has nine protons. How many electrons will a neutral fluorine atom have? It has nine protons, and nine electrons is the correct answer. So we have to take these nine electrons and fit them in here. Well, the 1s state, that's an L of 0. We can put two electrons for L equals 0 because the m sub L will be 0, and then plus or minus a half for the spin quantum number, two possible electrons. What about the 2s state? Well, again, it's an s state, so it can receive two electrons. I've used up four electrons. I've got five electrons remaining. How will they um, fit in here? Well, it's time for us to go to the third line, third diagonal, to the p state. And the p state can hold six electrons. Again, remember the uh, L numbers here. The S is L equals zero, and there's only one choice for M sub L. The P is L equals one. There are three choices for M sub L. Minus one, zero, and one. Each M sub L can hold two electrons. So there's room for six. Why did I write a five? We only have nine electrons in fluorine, neutral fluorine. So we stop there, and that's our configuration for fluorine. Our next atom to consider would be neon. It has 10 protons, so it has 10 electrons. And same start here. What should we put in for the 2p state? There are 10 electrons. I've used up four. There are six left, and six is what the p-state can hold. What about sodium? Sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. We start off the same, 1s2, 2s2. How many can I put into the p-state? We've used up four, there are seven left. Six is the limit for the p-state. So I need to come back to my chart. I've used up the, the p-state. Next in uh, line would be the 3s state. There's room for two, but we only have one electron left. Again, two and two, that's four, plus six, that's ten. One is eleven. So that's the configuration for sodium. Then a question, why are fluorine and sodium very reactive? Why are they very reactive? Now, if you take a look at the fluorine, it's missing one electron from having a filled shell. Um, the four electrons here kind of neutralize the charge of four of the protons. We have five protons left that are um, 
available to pull on these five outer electrons. And in this uh, L equals one state, there is room for one more electron that would feel significant pull from the nucleus. Um, we only screen off from the inner electrons, these four, the 1s2 and the 2s2. Um, so we can have another electron here and it will feel a significant pull towards the nucleus. Fluorine tends to attract one electron and it can pull it off of other atoms. It has a big affinity for filling up the p-shell. Um, so that makes it reactive. It tends to grab electrons from other atoms. What about the sodium? Sodium has the opposite situation. This 3s electron is sitting very far from the nucleus. And we've screened off 10 charges with the 2, 2, and the 6. We have one proton left that's unscreened. But this electron is far away from the nucleus. The force is weak. And it's very easy to strip this 3s uh, electron away from the nucleus. Uh, so sodium easily gives up one electron. That makes these um, active, reactive uh, elements. The fluorine would like to fill the P shell. The sodium is has in this uh, outer 3s1 electron very far away from the nucleus. Easy for that to be stripped off. And the last question here, why is neon not very reactive? Why is the neon not very reactive? We come back and look at the electron configuration. It has a filled P shell. It has the six uh, electrons that it uh, that it needs. So there's no room for another electron to get into this position relatively close to the nucleus and feel a significant force uh, from the protons. If we would add an electron to uh, the neon, that electron would be far away from the nucleus. That's not likely to be pulled in by this nucleus. And uh, we can't put a seventh uh, electron in the p-shell. It only has room for six. So there's no place closer to the nucleus to go into. Uh, poly exclusion principle prevents us from putting, say, a third electron in the 2s state. Um, so we can't get another electron close to the nucleus or be held on to. Um, the neon doesn't want to give up one electron from the p state. This, all six of these electrons feel significant force from the nucleus. Um, so the ne neon doesn't want to give up, doesn't want to grab any. And uh, it's not reactive. Um, no strong tendency. To attract an electron. This new electron is, would be sitting far away from the nucleus in the 3s state. Uh, so not much force available to do that. All the protons have been screened off by the 10 protons of uh, by the 10 electrons of the existing neon atom. And um, the 2p electrons The 2p electrons, all of all six of those, are tightly held. All six of these electrons feel a significant force back towards the nucleus. So the neon doesn't want to give up that electron. And you may know that the uh, element neon falls in the column of the noble gases. This is not a uh, legitimate or uh, good answer to this question. We can't say neon is not very reactive and just say it's a noble gas. I memorize that. You need to understand the physics of why it's not reactive. It doesn't want to attract another electron. It only has 10 protons. Those 10 protons are holding on to 10 electrons already. There's no extra charge to attract another electron. And it doesn't want to give up an electron. All the 2p6 electrons feel significant force from the nucleus. That makes it a noble gas. The statement noble gas does not make this not reactive. It's just noble gas is descriptive of atoms that aren't uh, very reactive.
So give the physics explanation, not just the one word answer that you memorized.